Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I fully intended to film this birth story video with two little twins in my arms, but this is the current situation. So I just like couldn't break that up and I need them to sleep for a little bit. So I'm gonna tell this story solo then I can talk with my hands, be more expressive. I'm super excited to share my birth story with you today. If you are not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so because you would have seen that I have shared already my birth vlog from giving birth to these twins almost three weeks ago, which, wow, the days are long, but time is flying. That's really actually crazy. Three weeks felt like forever when I was pregnant and now this like, fight like that. We captured a lot more than I thought we did when we were filming at the hospital, which is great, but there's definitely some details that were left out that I want to share with you today and just sort of talk through it and share what the birth looked like. So it was really crazy for like, it happened so quick and just so abnormal for what a normal twin birth looks like, especially after everything we've gone through this pregnancy. So let's dive in. Okay. So really brief synopsis of at 21 weeks, I had to have a cerclage put in. I had to have surgery to stop from going into labor and losing our babies. And then like the week later, we learned that they were seriously small, like severe intrauterine growth restricted. Little girl Harper was under 1% just about the whole pregnancy. And then at 29 weeks, I went into full blown preterm labor. I was 15 minutes away from being wheeled into a C-section when they removed my cerclage. Everything calmed down miraculously. I spent five days in the hospital and then they released me and actually these babies were born exactly seven weeks from the day I was supposed to have that scheduled or that emergency c-section it was exactly seven weeks after that that we kept them in it's been a whirlwind for sure and all of that is chronicled on my youtube channel should you want to catch yourself up okay so let's go back three weeks so Wednesday May 26th is Alec, my husband's birthday. Did a birthday dinner for him. I thought the babies would be here by then. So I had all this stuff prepped for his birthday that I did ahead of time. Cause I'm like, I'm not gonna be doing this when the babies are here. So we had a really lovely birthday for him. Uh, go to bed and then the next day, Thursday, May 27th at 2.20 in the morning, I woke up to what felt like a pop inside me. And it was weird because at no point this whole pregnancy have the babies woken me up from movement. They hadn't kicked and rolled around to the point where it would actually wake me up from sleep. But I woke up and it truly felt like a thud inside me. And then I'm like, what was that? Was that my water breaking? But then there was no gush of water and there I like moved around and kind of sat up and there was like a little trickle of something, which I'm like, that's weird too. Cause at no point in this pregnancy have I had like trouble like, incontinence or like peeing myself or anything. So I'm like, that is suspicious. I just, my gut told me that my water broke. So jump in the shower, cause it was gonna be a hair wash day. I'm like, I can't go into the hospital looking like a grease ball. Wake up Alec, I'm like, I think my water broke. I'm not totally sure, but I'm gonna jump in the shower just in case. Do that, do my hair. Within an hour, we leave for the hospital. Also at this point, I really wasn't having any contractions. Like I didn't know if it was in my head or if it, like I was actually having pain. My back was starting to hurt a little bit, but I'm like, is this like placebo? Like I think my back is hurting because I think my water broke. By the time we got to the hospital, I was for sure, I'm like, okay, this is the real deal. Like I was starting to have to like breathe through and they were pretty frequent. Like I feel like at least every two minutes by the time we got to the hospital, they got me checked into triage. It was probably about two, at that point, two hours past when my water broke, the pop. They checked me, I was at six centimeters already. So they're like, you're having your babies. They gave me some fentanyl in my IV at that point because I was starting to be pretty uncomfortable. You can see in the vlog, we like literally filmed as like right as they put the fentanyl in, it like hit me. <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time I watch it. But yeah, they brought me to a labor and delivery room and it was so cute because they had the two little like beds ready for the twins and it felt so real and we were so excited. And um, pretty quickly after we got in there, they were able to come in and get me my epidural. There was like three of us that came in at the same time in labor and the other two, like I guess missed their window. <laughs> 
to get the epidural, so I got mine pretty quick. They had to do it three times because I guess being like so round in my belly with these twins, I couldn't bend over far enough to actually get in between my spine, so it was like hitting my bone, so I was feeling like all the numbing really hard on my left side. Honestly, you guys, epidurals are like, Ugh, they're not that bad. It's just uncomfy. You're like, ow, but it's not anything to be freaked out over, in my opinion. Gosh, I mean, I don't even feel like there's that much to say up until this point because it all happened so quickly. About an hour after they gave me the epidural, they came and checked me again, and I was at a nine, nine centimeters. So it moved really, really, really quick for like any pregnancy and nonetheless my twin pregnancy or my first pregnancy i thought it was going to be like a day at least it was just happening so quick we like literally didn't even have time to talk about everything like rest or pray or anything like it happened so quick and there were so many people in and out thankfully my doctor was on call anyways to be there that day in the hospital but i did learn that i had a special note in my file that she would have been called in to try to come anyways if i went into labor to try to deliver the babies okay so let's just jump into the good part here that at like 7 30 in the morning so about five hours after my water broke it was time to push and it was very different than I thought it would be. Normally for a twin birth, you are delivering in an OR and there's a ton of people, like teams for both babies and for you and NICU. That was not the case at all. There was only three people in there while I was pushing Alec. And then I had a nurse, I had a student nurse, and then my doctor. My doctor was kind of like in and out in the beginning. Um, she thought it was going to take me three hours to push these babies out and that they would be born an hour apart from each other based on how everything was looking, I guess, and that it was my first pregnancy. I'm like, three hours, <laughs> heck no. So up until like right before they were born, like I'd say like two minutes or so before Hudson came out, then they called and said, babies are coming, we need a few more people. And then even still, there was not that many extra people that came into the room, maybe like four or five extra people. So yeah, push, push, push for 30 minutes. Pushing was really hard, it did not come naturally. And I don't know if my epidural was wearing off or if that's just how it feels, but it was like pretty painful at the end. I know it looked very peaceful in my birth vlog and I really, 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 really did try to just be so calm. Like that was my whole thing. Like I just wanted to try to be as calm as I possibly could, but I definitely cut some stuff out of the birth vlog like some of the noises I made, I didn't even know I could. Like I was in some serious pain. Anyways, 804 Hudson is born. So here's the thing that I anticipated, I think a little bit, but it still frustrated me. It was not this like big, like ethereal moment when they put him on me because there's another baby I had to push out and I had to like do it quickly because I knew we had a really small window to try to get my body to not like the Venus fly trap and like close up because I thought it was done birthing one baby. So they put him on me and got him to cry and he's on my belly. And I'm just like, ah, I can't even like take this all in or like he can't even like come up on me right now. They have to take him away because I have to focus on getting another baby out. So Alec cuts the cord, which was very sweet. Then they are like, okay, we got to get baby girl out. So they give me a shot in my arm to relax my uterus so it doesn't like close up because if that were to happen, I would have to go in for an emergency C-section. There's not a lot you can do at that point. So here's the thing too. Harper was transverse, which means she was across my belly. They didn't know if she was gonna flip head down or feet down once Hudson came out. Well, she flipped feet down, which is okay. My doctor was comfortable delivering her that direction. So my doctor's like, brace yourself. Hand is going up and we're twisting her and pulling baby girl out by the legs. And four minutes later at 808, Harper was born. Legs first. Put her on me for, I think, just like a quick second. And then they had to take her, you know, to check on her, especially because she was the one who was like so small. So I ended up with one small tear, like a small first degree tear. I needed like one stitch. So I birthed Hudson, then I birthed Harper. Then you birth both of the placentas, which was wild. Those things are huge. Alec and I were like, whoa, 
I was not expecting that. I also did technically hemorrhage um, from losing so much blood, which they anticipated happening because you've got two babies, two placentas. It's like two dinner plate sized open wounds inside of you when those placentas detach. So they had blood bags ready to go in case I needed an actual like, transfusion, but I lost just over a liter of blood and I didn't need extra blood, but technically that's hemorrhaging. So the big questions were how much they were going to weigh and if they were going to the NICU. We assumed they would for sure be going to the NICU, especially Harper, even just for a little bit. You can see in the vlog, I ask, does she have to go to the NICU? And they say, no, she's big enough. She doesn't need to go. She's doing good. And I think I was just like in so much shock because I just literally birthed two babies. I really didn't react to that, but I was in shock that she didn't have to go to the NICU. And this entire hospital stay, they did not need the NICU. They were close a couple times. I'll touch on that real quick um, in just a sec. But their weights, I kept asking like every 30 seconds how much they weighed. They're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Hudson, they thought he was going to weigh six pounds and he ended up at five pounds, six ounces. And then Harper, they thought she was gonna be like the low four pounds and she ended up being four pounds, 10 ounces. I mean, I know they're tiny, but they don't look really, really preemie or like really tiny or sick or anything like that to me. I think they're quite cute little twins, but even when they were born, I'm like, you guys don't look like preemie babies, even though they were born at 36 weeks and four days. So as far as NICU close calls, because they were both under the 10th percentile for their weight, they had to have their blood sugar checked for the first 24 hours, which meant like every other hour they had to have their heel pricked um, and test their blood. I have like PTSD from that clicking sound of the little needle pricking their heel and then them just like screaming. It was not fun, especially by the end of the 24 hours, I had not slept. And I'm like listening to these babies cry from being pricked. I'm like, I can't do this. They did fail their blood sugar tests twice each. And if they failed them three times, they would have had to go to the NICU. So they had to get glucose like gel in their mouth a couple times when they failed those glucose tests. And then we had to check their temperatures pretty religiously as well because they were measuring low, like 96.2, which is too low. So if they couldn't keep those up, they were gonna have to go to the NICU. But other than that, we only were in the hospital for two nights, almost a full three days. We went home in the evening on Saturday. So that's that. That's my birth story. Um, we're all doing really good so far. I have some videos coming out soon sharing these first few weeks as a family together. It's been a real big adjustment. I will say that those first few days were wild. Like my hormones coming down were really, really, really tough. I've been doing really good since. Like I don't feel like I'm having any sort of like postpartum depression symptoms or anything, but I love making these videos. I love sharing the Fern fam with you all. So thank you so much for watching this video, for subscribing, for giving it a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.